we ran Ralph safe with the sandbox enabled, we ran Ralph efficiently with a plan.md and an activity.md, we ran Ralph cost effectively because we gave it a max number of iterations, and we let Ralph validate its own work because we gave it access to Claude for Chrome so it could get visual input and get console logs and understand if it achieves a task or not. These are the steps you should take for Ralph or other long running agents. There's a lot of hype about Ralph Wilgum in the AI coding community, and I think a lot of people are getting it wrong. Here's the thing, you need to know when to actually use Ralph Wilgum. You need to know how to use it safely, efficiently, and cost effectively. And lastly, you need to know how to actually run Ralph because there's two main ways I see people talking about online. The original way by Jeffrey Huntley, which is essentially just a bash loop. And then you have the official Ralph Wilgum plugin from Claude Code, and it works very differently than the original bash loop, it works on a stop hook, which is fundamentally different than the original Ralph Wiggum setup. The good news is the way I prepare before running Ralph Wiggum is the same if I use the Claude setup or the original bash loop. It's equally as important for both methods and it's very easy to tweak. So in this video, I'm gonna go over my best practices, how I believe we should be running Ralph Wiggum because I think a lot of people are hyping this up and giving poor advice on how to use this. So what is Ralph Wiggum? It's a way to run Claude code or whatever agent in a continuous autonomous loop. It solves the problem that most agents have of finishing too early. But this isn't a magic pill. Essentially what it does is it tells Claude or whatever agent you're using, do this task, or you're done, do this task, or you're done, do this task, and it just keeps running. And Ralph Wiggum is best for long running tasks, things you want going for a long period of time. And more than that, when you already know what you want to build. So instead of Claude Code or Cursor or Codex thinking it's done too early and stopping, this is a way to force the agent to keep working, keep checking until it knows it's done. And by the way, Ralph Wiggum doesn't only have to work for Claude Code. You can set it up to work with any CLI agent like Codex, like Gemini, like Open Code. I'm just showing you in Claude Code, but you can apply this with minimal tweaks to any CLI agent. So my first experience was, wow, this gets really expensive. And it does if you don't use it correctly. But then when Boris Cherney made his post about how he uses Claude Code, by the way, I did a full video on Boris's post. I'll link to it above. I got pretty interested when he mentioned Ralph Wiggum. And then I started thinking, well, Anthropic officially released a Ralph Wiggum plugin. And it's actually a perfect catalyst to implement what they talked about in their effective harnesses for long running agents. And I also did a full video on this blog post by Anthropic about spec driven development, but they never really implemented something. They gave us a framework here, but it stopped there. So I came back to that blog post after Boris Journey's Twitter post and all the dots started connecting for me. Use Rolf Wiggum to try and implement Anthropic's approach to long running agents. If Boris Journey from Anthropic is using it for long running tasks, I can do it too. So that's what I set out to do. And spoiler alert, the plugin from Anthropic doesn't come nearly as close to achieving this as the original bash loop. I'm gonna show you both of them and show you why, but first let's just get into setting it up. So first things for safety. Boris Cherney gives us the answer right here. For very long running tasks, I will use the Ralph Wiggum plugin in a sandbox to avoid permission prompts for the session so Claude could cook without being blocked. At this point, we've all tried yellow mode or dangerously skip permissions. But what happens there is if you're not careful, the agent eventually gets a little bit too trigger happy and it can make changes that are really hard to revert. And the whole point of Ralph Wiggum is to run in a continuous loop. So it can be going for minutes, for hours, completely overnight. And the problem is you have to give it a lot of permissions, but you don't wanna give it all the permissions and you also don't wanna to have to babysit it and keep clicking yes, because what's the point of autonomous agent? Agent then. So the obvious solution is sandboxing Claude Code. A few months ago, Anthropic made this paper on how to sandbox Claude Code. It's really easy. All you have to do is run slash sandbox. But running slash sandbox can put everything in a sandbox and you don't always want that. It can get a bit problematic for deploying locally, for pulling down dependencies and a bunch of other things. So I recommend going to the docs and figuring out what permissions you wanna give it access to. So let me just open up this project real quickly. If we go into my settings.json, you can see how I set up my sandbox. So then when we open up Claude, you will see here, your bash commands will be sandboxed. My sandbox is already turned on here. If you don't have it turned on, you can do slash sandbox and turn it on. So right here, you see that I'm using a sandbox bash tool with auto allow. If I go over to the config, you can see how I set it up. Everybody will set up their sandbox differently, but that's my first step. Start using the sandbox even before you start using Ralph Wiggum, because when you're running autonomous agents, you want them to be isolated. You can give them some permissions, but you want that layer of protection. Number two comes back to planning. You don't want to leave Ralph to make these ambiguous decisions and come back and figure out what he did later. So my first step before anything, before we even touch Ralph, is write a plan, write a PRD. 
And it's so important with Ralph because you're gonna let it run for hours on end. In all my other videos about spec-driven development, we always start with planning it out and getting as much down on paper as possible so our agents could build out a task list and start working on it. So don't waste your time and don't waste your money on running Ralph Wilgum for an unfleshed out, unplanned idea. Have as much as you can figured out. In my case here, I already made my PRD. And by the way, you can already see my PRD creator skill here in this project. That's what created this whole PRD. And it works really great with any spectrum of development, and especially with Ralph. I'll link to that video above. And I already took my PRD and I broke it into a plan. But I didn't use spec kit or open spec or BMAD. I told Claude Code to build this plan.md based on what Anthropic talked about in effective harnesses for long running agents. And if we go down, this is how they suggest writing the task list, which is JSON. It has a category, it has a description, it has the steps, and it starts as failing. Passes, false. So I told Claude Code to look at my PID and then create a plan.md file with this format. I also passed it the entire article so it had more context. In that article, they talk about a Claude progress TXT file, but I decided to call it the activity.md file because sometimes it doesn't make progress, but I wanna log all the activity. So now we have a PRD, we have a plan and activity file. Okay, so all the pieces are coming together. Let's start talking about running Ralph. We'll start with Anthropic and then we'll move to the official bash loop. So if we go to Anthropic's Ralph Wilgum skill, they talk about how it works, but this is the most important thing if you don't want to completely obliterate your usage limits, max iterations, because it will just keep running and the default is unlimited. And trust me, make sure you set max iterations. And I think the best way to do this is setting it from 10 to 20, at least at first. Next, set a completion promise, meaning in your prompt. And we're gonna to get to that in a second. Tell it what the completion promise is so that it knows how to stop. So that's how to be cost efficient. Worst case scenario, it doesn't finish after 20 durations and you can start it up again. And last thing you should know is about good prompt practices. Obviously, don't do a very broad, very basic prompt. Give it requirements, give it success criteria, and going back one last time to Boris Cherny's post, his final tip is give it a feedback loop. So what I've been doing is giving Claude Code the ability to use Claude for Chrome. Essentially it gives Claude the ability to launch Chrome and test out what it's doing. Take a look, take a screenshot, look at console logs. It closes the whole feedback loop. Okay, so enough talking, let's actually look at it in action. So here we are back in this project. All it has is the PRD, the plan, and the activity.md. Because we're channeling Boris Cherny, we're gonna open up iTerm2. This is the terminal I believe he's using. And we're just gonna open it next to VS Code. Okay, so we're gonna open up Claude. If you don't have Ralph set up already, you wanna do slash plugin, and you'll see this discover page. And you can just go down to find Ralph, or you can just go to the top, search Ralph. It's not showing up for me because I already have it installed, but you click enter, you install it, and then you have it running in Claude Code. Then if we do slash Chrome, we can see that we have Claude for Chrome already set up. That's the whole feedback loop that Claude has to check that it did a good job. And lastly, to trigger Ralph, you do slash Ralph, and you want to select this one, Ralph loop. So you just press tab, and it tells you everything else you need to have in here. Your prompt, your max iterations, and your completion promise text. So here's my prompt. I'm just gonna tell you the important parts. First, read the activity.md file to see what was recently accomplished. Start the site locally and keep it local host only. Verify the current behavior in Claude and Chrome by opening the local URL and checking the page loads with no obvious layout issues. Then open plan.md and choose the single highest priority task whose status is failing. Work on exactly one task, check the browser console for errors and confirm the change matches the acceptance criteria in plan.md. Append a dated progress entry to activity.md describing what you changed, which commands you ran, and what you verified in Chrome. When the task is confirmed, update the status in plan.md from failing to passing. Make one git commit for that task with a clear single line message. Repeat until all tasks are passing. When all tasks are marked passing, output exactly complete. And here's the most important part, the cost efficiency, max iterations 20, completion promise complete. Okay, so we're gonna take all this and paste it in after this Ralph loop slash command. So we're gonna press enter. And just like that, I'll start by reading the activity.md. I'll read the plan. Let me check if the files already exist. And as you can see, it's starting to work. It's doing it all. It just opened up Claude in Chrome. I'm not even touching it. And it's just getting to work. So you see here, task one complete. Let me update activity.md, plan.md, and commit. So let's just check in on that. So we see that the first task went to true. We can also see the activity.md file has gotten updated. If we go back to Claude code, we can see that it's verifying in Chrome. We can see Claude in Chrome is navigating to the local version. It has feedback. Our services sections looks great. We can see it changing the task from false to true, and it will just continue running. 
Okay, so finished running. You see that it says complete here. It says it ran for 17 minutes. It actually ran for a bit longer than that. I had to stop it, but here's what I wanna show you. It ran it all in a single chat, in a single context window. The reason I had to stop it is because it got stuck at 0% context. I had to manually compact it. And it can do auto compact, but that's not the point of Rolf Wiggum. Rolf is supposed to be an autonomous agent that runs nonstop where you don't have to intervene, but also more importantly, in the original implementation, every task, every iteration is a fresh loop, a fresh context window. But here in Cloud Code's implementation, it all happens in the same context window because the loop is triggered on a stop hook. But one of the biggest problems with Cloud Code or with long running agents is the context window gets bloated. So it doesn't really help that all the tasks are done sequentially within the same context window. Even if it does auto compact, you're just adding more and more blow and more and more room for hallucination. So does it run? Yes. But does it actually do the loop? Not really. So now let's move to the bash loop. This implementation works great for Cloud Code, Codex CLI, or any CLI tool. The whole setup process is pretty much the same. I still recommend setting up the sandbox the same way. I still recommend doing a PRD and planning it out and breaking it into a plan and an activity.md file. I still recommend setting max iterations, and I still recommend giving it the ability to verify its work. Now, because this method runs headless, we're not gonna be able to use Claude for code. We're gonna set up the Playwright MCP. So I added the Playwright MCP into here. Also, instead of pasting the whole prompt in, I made a prompt.md. It's essentially the same exact prompt. I just modified it to work with Playwright. The activity.md stays the same. It's just empty right now. The plan.md stays the same. Everything is set as false. And then we create a Ralph script for the bash loop, very basic. Of course, you have to make it executable by doing chmod. We give it the promise. And the way we pass in the max iterations is via the command to start the script. And lastly, because this is in headless mode, we're not going to be able to see what's actually happening like we were able to see in Cloud Code. It will give us an update after every iteration, but we will be able to actually watch things change in the activity.md and the plan.md. We'll also be able to watch it making git commits, so we're able to see what happens. And what you'll see happening here is a full iteration loop. It's stopping iteration. And then it calls Cloud again from a fresh context window. And this is why I really recommend using this method over the Cloud skill plugin. So let's go. I'm just going to do ralph.sh3. This is the number of max iterations. I just want to show you how it works. So we see it starting iteration one. We can see that more things are being added to the file system. We can see the pass has already moved to true. We can see a summary of its first loop. And then I added the screenshot folder to see if Playwright's actually being called. So if we click through to it, we'll see that it did the first step. It made a basic web page and then it screenshotted it and saved it to the screenshots folder. And now we know that there's this whole feedback loop running. And lastly, I know that I said that Ralph should be used for long running tasks, but I just wanted to show you how to set it up and how it should run and the difference between the Cloud Code version and the original bash loop. So wrapping things up, you could run Ralph whatever way you want via the Cloud plugin or via the bash loop. The most important thing is giving it all the criteria for it to succeed. A safety mechanism, a plan, the ability to validate its work and a limit on iterations and a way to know that it's done. And this is true for any long running agent. So I hope you found this video helpful or insightful. If you have any questions or feedback, drop it in the comments below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. It really helps me grow. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day.